Love these. So fun. That is the best part of pottery right there. What is up guys? Welcome to the studio. I'm John the Potter. So good to have you here. Today we have a completely full glaze kiln that we are going to unload and all the pots that come out of here are going to be for sale on May 9th, which happens to be Mother's Day, which I did not think about when I made this date like four months ago, but hopefully you guys can check it out if you want to get any of the pots that come out of here. I'm super excited. We got some tests in there. We, I just, I think I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good at glazing in my electric kiln and uh, it's getting really fun. Oh, I'm thinking about doing a epic pottery event at our studio this summer. Would you guys come? Like a one day huge thing. I'll do Raku firings. We'll do, I might have like a hundred pots that we'll do this like glaze your own. So you can come pick a pot and then you can like choose what the glaze will be and then I'll ship it out when it's done. I'm, I got some ideas surrounding that. So what do you think? Would you guys make a road trip? Or if you're from Minnesota, would you come out for a one day John the Potter epic pottery event? That's enough of me. Let's unload this kiln, huh? Let's do it. Woo! Let's do this thing. So I was started to unload this yesterday and I thought, oh, there is some good stuff in here. I want to wait to unload it until I can show you guys. Okay. So we, I started thinking after I got back from North Carolina, like I need to start making some bigger stuff. Like if I ever did build a wood kiln, you really need variation in sizes so that you can take advantage of like the arch and like all different stuff. So I started throwing a few bigger pieces. This is a carved on the bottom with Aurora green and winter wood dripping over top. That looks pretty awesome. A little bit bigger. This was maybe like four pounds of clay or something. I gotta find somewhere to put all this stuff. All right, another, got another vase. So this is midnight rain over winter wood. And this is how I do those insanity mugs. I, I might fire this again upside down to really like make it an epic vase. Right now it's cool and I like it. It's actually quite cool. Maybe I won't refire it. All right, and then we got a bunch of these. These did super well in the March Madness tournament and a personal favorite of mine. So they're carved with satin patina on the bottom and then Aurora Green and Winterwood dripping over the top. So got quite a few of those. Those will be in the next sale. Whenever I'm thinking about how I'm gonna glaze stuff, I always look at what I have and then what kind of colors are missing. So I had a lot of the pink and purple. I had some Northern Lights, but I was missing the Canyon Skies, one of my one of my original. So this is not a Mako glaze. This is a Albany Brown, Matte White and Buttercream. Oh, another idea I was thinking about is I got a message from somebody that was like, you know, I noticed that you don't answer any questions from people. Like, and that is true. I really don't answer comments and stuff. Here's more canyons, guys. I used to literally sit down and answer all the comments on YouTube all the time. And then it just became overwhelming and I decided that I was using time that I would otherwise be making pots or making videos or spending with my family or doing something else that would be a priority for me. And I decided that I just like, I, I was getting a little overwhelmed with the comments, so I stopped answering everything. So, ooh, here we go. Here's a carved canyon sky. Beauty, beauty. Those are awesome. Anyway, I was thinking about setting up some live videos on YouTube where you could watch me work and then ask, and then I'll answer a bunch of different questions. So like once a week, if you guys had questions that you'd have to hop on that YouTube, that live YouTube video and you can answer it there. And that way I could be getting work done. Woo! Yo! Whoa, dude. This is, look at that little spot right there. That's beautiful. Really metallic-y. And then look at this. Okay, can you see this in there? There's like this really like variation in like purple that came out in that. That's really cool. That one, so normally if I wanted to make this an insanity mug, I would fire it again. Uh, but I think that one's too cool. I'm not gonna have to fire that again. So back to my idea. I do would do this live video and you guys could hop on, ans ask questions. I would answer them on the live video and that way like you guys could get questions answered that you wanted from me without me having to go back and edit it and do all that stuff, you know what I mean? So copper ore over sandstone. So comment below, tell me what you think of that idea. Cause I do, I hate the idea of like people like wanting to know something and not being able to find it or whatever. And that's why I try questions that I get really often that I'll make videos about. So then I can like answer a lot of questions with just like one video. Here we go, this is cool. So this one is like, I have the carved action in there but I didn't do it on the whole thing. I just did it like in little sections, which is kind of cool. I always check right away. Like the, one of the first things I do with the checking is like if it's warped, 
which unfortunately this one is a little warped. That's hard. It's really hard to get like really pretty beautiful bowl. And like the, it won't warp. Like when you set it on a table, I'll be able to flatten the bottom so that it, but pretty gorgeous. Love it. Got some copper ore over sandstone. That was another one that like, I was kind of missing some browns. So got that action. And those are always really, I love those. So far, we're 100%. We're batting a thousand. Whoa. Wow, those are crazy. Okay, so I'm making some bowls. This is that midnight rain over winter wood. Now, in my head, I'm thinking like, what if I, so this the same thing with insanity would be maybe to like refire these, but upside down. The only problem is, is like you use stilts for the upside down firing, you know? And it's okay when it's on the bottom of a mug because you don't really like, interact with that surface very often and I can like kind of just zip 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 like sand it down but when it's in the bottom of a bowl that would worry me a little bit. Okay anyway that's for my brain to think about. Those are that one. Some of these are really cool. This one is like really quite special. God I love that. That's so cool. So cool. This one this these are these are epic epic. That's my word. Thumbnail. <laughs> so, it's cool, but I might have to do, I might have to turn this one into an insanity. That, those are really, really cool. I like them. I like them a lot. All right, then, the last show. All right, here is one. Yes, this is so awesome. I love this. So my Norse blue has been kind of thin, so it hasn't been turning out perfectly, but that, I love it. Look at that. So that's winter wood, raspberry mist, and then Norse blue. It just melts, melts so nicely. That's exactly what I wanted it to look like. It's even cool, like, sometimes you get this little variation of color, where, like, if you're pouring on or you dip like and then you let it drip a little bit and so like that's pretty cool in there I like that I think that's one thing that I really noticed about when I was like in the wood fire is like you get these different pots out that have variation of little stuff like that and like you know like this is kind of where my finger can you see this my finger was probably there when I was glazing it so I would glaze it like this and I don't know, I just, I had a little bit more of a mentality of like, that stuff's cool. Like the stuff that makes it look different. I think in people in electric kilns, you get, you get to a point where everything is so predictable that you wanna control every little aspect and you want it to look perfect. But why, why do you want it to look perfect? Stuff's way cooler when it's not absolutely, I mean, there's this, there's a, you want the imperfections to be intentional. Like you want things to look like you were trying to do that or you meant to do that. Like it doesn't want, it just shouldn't look messy or, you know. But if you can get things where it's like, I don't know, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but comment below. Like that, like look at how that dripped down right there. Like that's cool, that's dope. I really, I really like the work out of electric kilns. I, you know, you can, you obviously gauged a little bit for me, like should I build a gas kiln, should I build a wood kiln, like. Okay, so when I put these midnight rain over winter wood on the bottom, well there, that one turned out pretty good. I tend to get like some little pinholes, but that one that was on the top, didn't get any pinholes, so I'm wondering if maybe I put these ones at the top, if that will be better. So anyway, so some of these I'm gonna refire. There, this is that one. This is like, I did a little tester on something and it came out so good, I had to do it. This is kind of the same glaze as the one that's on the carved, but it just obviously, and it kind of looks the same, I guess, but really cool. That Aurora Green over Winterwood up there is pretty gorgeous. Spiral action. All right, here, Woo. look at that. That is why you have a little bit of a foot rim around there, look at that, that's so cool. No pinholes whatsoever, that's perfect. Oh, and then this one is cool. So this one was another like little tester carve thing. I just carved the middle section and this is just straight midnight rain, no, no other glazes. It's a nice blue, it's a little drippy speckly in there. This was a, <laughs> Ryder, my son, was really interested in glazing a pot, so I said, you can glaze this one, so he dipped it in raspberry mist. So this will not be for sale. It's a little shot cup. More midnight rain over winter wood. Midnight rain over winter wood. Those are like the, I just like love these. I know, I've just been making a lot of those recently because they're very 
just, I think they're really unique and I think they, yeah, they're just pretty sweet. And then these obviously look super nice, I think. And that is about it. What do we got in there? Like two left? Really, 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 really good kiln. Really good kiln. So fun. That is the best part of pottery right there. You guys join me for. There's a lot of work that goes in before it gets to this point, and once you take it out and it's done, it's like, so good. Good. All these pots are gonna be for sale May 9th, 6 p.m. Central Time on Etsy. Check them out. Otherwise, also, if you're wondering, there were 39 pots in this kiln. 40 plus 30 plus 11 plus 39 is 210. 210 is our total for April. What's 352 plus 361 plus 270 plus 210? It's 1,193. So through April, we have 1,193 pots. We're gonna have lots of good videos coming. My next video, I think, is standing versus sitting. Why I stand and throw. So you'll wanna check that one out. Otherwise, as always, leave me a comment below if you have any video ideas. Let me know about the live video thing. I think once a week, I want to do a live video for you guys. You guys can hop on, ask me any questions. That would be a way to get any questions answered because I am totally an open book. I don't keep any secrets. I always give out as much as I can. Uh, but sometimes responding to all the comments has gotten a little overwhelming. So that is all. I will see you guys in the next video.